Okay, so what is medievalism? Um, so we're going to begin with the assumption that culture matters. That is, culture, as reflected in our case in the arts and entertainment, has meaning. Culture can reveal the values, anxieties, and the aspirations of the social world that produces it. Um, and you can learn a lot about the past, just like you can learn about a different country when you travel. Um, the title of a famous book by David Lowenthal on how we use the past is called The Past is a Foreign Country. Why should we care? First, there's a pleasure, I think, basic intellectual curiosity, because it's interesting. It's fun to travel um, for those of us who have been privileged enough to do it. Um, but second, I think learning about other cultures helps us to better understand or see our own, um, which, because we are steeped in it, in our own culture, often simply seems natural. So the modern world, that is since the 18th century, has been interested in the Middle Ages, which run from approximately 500, end of the Roman Empire, to 1500, um, the age of print, basically, um, often defining itself in contrast to that time period. Why the Middle Ages, um, as opposed to the Renaissance or the Enlightenment or the Romantic period, I'm not really sure, and maybe we'll figure it out in the course of this um, class. Um, I think it's partly because of the great contrast of the Middle Ages. So sometimes the Middle Ages is seen as better than the modern world. That is, it's imagined as a simpler time with stable social hierarchies, little technology, and stronger community. People are imagined to have had a closer relationship with nature, or stronger morals, uh, or more religious conviction, or more passionate feelings. Sometimes the Middle Ages, though, is often seen as worse than the modern age. It's imagined as more casually violent, as diseased, unhygienic, superstitious, patriarchal. Um, Marcus Bull, which I'm asking you to read during this first week, gives a good overview in the introduction to Thinking Medieval about the various really sort of contradictory images um, that we have of the Middle Ages. These images are not necessarily wrong, um, but they probably tell us less about the past than about modern concerns about what is good or bad, desirable or problematic, progressive or static in today's world. That is, our recreation of the past reveals more about what we value in the present than about life in the past. That is, we often project onto the past what we find lacking in our own world. Um, so it's important to remember that medievalism began in the Middle Ages, in fact. Um, Beowulf, the manuscript of Beowulf dates to about <clears throat> the year <clears throat> 1000. But the action in the poem, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> it's not COVID. <laughs> um, the action in the poem took place in the early 500s. Anglo-Saxons in England in 1000 were looking back to the 500s in Scandinavia as a time that reflected their own aspirations and their own concerns. Um, if the historical Arthur existed, he would have lived around 502. That is, he'd be the same age as Beowulf or from the same time period. He would have lived in England after the Roman legions withdrew and the Anglo-Saxons had begun their migration or their invasion of the island. If none of this makes sense, I'll go over it again. Don't worry. Um, the earliest Arthurian romances um, by a guy who lived in France um, was writing about 700 years after the maybe historical Arthur. And the most famous, at least for English speakers, rendition of the Arthurian saga by Thomas Mallory um, was written about a thousand years after Arthur's time period, that is around 1500, rounding up. Um, Mallory used Arthur to basically comment on his own society, that is, on the Middle Ages. And we, in turn, use Mallory's representation of the medieval past to reflect on our own age. 
And so this is just giving you a little idea of the architecture of the time. Uh, above me is usually what we sort of imagine, say, the Arthurian world to be like, right? Uh, stone castles, for instance. Um, and on the right-hand side of that drawing is probably closer to the truth. If you imagine Camelot, it would be sort of the uh, thatched, um, the thatched hall on the right, rather than the turreted uh, stone castle. Okay, so what we're doing in this class is trying to get some sense of what writers and readers in the Middle Ages valued about the past. And in the process, we should get some sense of what they valued in their present or what they found wanting or problematic in their present. Um, and how we moderns construe or remake the Middle Ages will also reveal um, both how cultural attitudes have changed and hopefully progressed since some of the values espoused in medieval literature will no doubt seem foreign or strange to you. Um, and also how certain perennial questions about the value of human action in the face of mortality or about justice or about the human propensity for self-destruction, um, how these kinds of um, questions continue to exercise us. Um, given recent political events and the continuing problem of the effects of racism in the U.S. This course um, will be considered in this course will be considering how the Middle Ages has been appropriated by what is sometimes called the alt right or white supremacists, um, and I'll address this issue in uh, the PowerPoint um, that you guys will be looking at for Thursday: um, medievalism and white nationalism. Thank you for listening.